Hello all, I am Arun Kumar Khannur. Today, we will be discussing on basics of cryptography. In today's session, we discuss on basics of cryptography, Kirchhoff's principle, types of cryptography, concepts of symmetric tree ciphers, types of crypt analysis attacks, traditional ciphers, that is substitution ciphers and transposition ciphers. Learning objectives, after attending this session, you shall be able to explain the meaning of the terms and the concepts of secret key cryptography and public key cryptography. Explain different types of crypt analysis attacks. Describe the two categories of traditional ciphers, substitution and transposition ciphers. First, we shall discuss on basics of cryptography, traditional symmetric tree ciphers. Cryptography is a science of disguising messages so that only the intended recipient can decipher the received message. So in communication, when we try to send a message, there is a sender and there is a receiver. Now when sender is sending a message, it is moving through the communication media. At that time, the crypt analyst or the hacker may try to grab that particular message and try to use it in unethical and unlawful way. At that time, even if he is doing it, he should unable to get the meaning out of it. Like that, we have to disguise the message. And then it has to go to the recipient side and recipient using certain techniques has to decipher and get the plain text that was sent by the sender. While doing so, the cryptography should ensure the integrity of the message. It has to maintain the confidentiality of the message. It has to ensure authentication and usage of authorized people and it should have digital signatures so that the people with digital signatures actually shall send and get the messages. The original message so sent by the sender is called as plain text and disguised version is called cipher text and the plain text and cipher text are often binary strings of the same length. There are two types of cryptography that we use to ensure that the message is disguised from the attackers. The first one is called as secret key cryptography, second one is called public key cryptography. In secret key cryptography, there is a secret key which is known to the sender and the receiver. Both of them will be using the same key and this key is shared between the sender and the receiver. When the sender is sending the message, the message which is in plain text will be converted into cipher text along with the key that will be sent. The recipient side, the person is going, will be using the shared key and unlock the message and get the information. In public cryptography, 
will be having the two keys one is called public key and second one is called private key these two distinct keys form a key pair and these are being used to send the message and ciphertext and uh, recovering or decrypting the sender the receiver side to get the original message the public key a user uses a public key to encrypt the message to that user it is intended to be known to the outside world there is some message which is taking place or moving from one person to another person like that one can notice it but one cannot understand what is inside for example in case of whatsapp messaging the entire content is decrypted who is the receiver who is the sender such information can be known to the third person or system admin however the message which is shared between the sender and receiver it is so in encrypted form no other person can see it so public key is allowing to know there is something is happening between two people but what is that that information will not be available but in case of private key the sender and receiver uses it and they are getting the information from the message which is sent by the sender in encrypted form and it will be cipher text that will be dispatched receiver gets that encrypted information and decrypt at his end by using the private key so public key the user uses public key to encrypt message however it is intended to be known to the outside world private key is known only to the recipient and he uses it to decrypt message let us see the general idea first we fo focus on symmetric key cryptography let us assume that some messaging is taking place between alka and brijesh alka is a sender and she sends the plain text and this plain text will be encrypted this is sender side encryption this involves the process to disguise original message and after that we will get the cipher text so plain text because of the encryption process is getting converted into cipher text this cipher text is sent through the channel and it arrives at the receiver side the brijesh who is sitting at the receiver side he uses the process to recover original message which will be in plain text so like this the receiver side message arrives which is in plain text form if p is the plain text after encryption if c is the cipher text and the k is the key then encryption to arrive at the cipher text c can be defined as encryption using the key k that is ek this function operates on the plain text when this encryption with the key k is applied on the plain text what we get is the cipher text and this is moving through the channel and it comes the other side it arrives at the receiver side the receiver using the decryption with the the key k and he applies that one on the cipher text application the plain text will be 
build back in case of the entire messaging you should be very careful about the usage of the k this is going to play very crucial role and you will be seeing it as we proceed to discuss at the end dk and uh, ek function on x message shall be equal to the message that we are going to recover that is x is a plain text ek and description using the key k on the plain text x so description and encryption if they are giving out the same message then the message is not distorted when it is traveling from receiver side and end side this has to be this integrity check shall be done we have assumed that the bridges creates the plain text p1 after decryption and this will be compared with the plain text that is being sent by alpha after the encryption the cipher text will be there and then it will be sent the message which was sent by alpha the message that was received at the bridge end p1 both are compared if p1 equal to p then encryption after that cipher text then decryption are taking place properly encrypted plain text that was received at the sender side after undergoing decryption produces the same plain text that is being sent by the sender alka now in symmetric key cryptography the same key is being used for encryption and decryption only one key is there now we shall see kutchoff's principle kutchoff says the secrecy should be in the key used for decryption not in the decryption or encryption algorithm means the key is going to make the magic and that is going to play very crucial role in maintaining the secrecy so encryption and decryption algorithms can be known to everybody but the key is going to play very crucial role based on kutchoff principle one should always assume that the adversary that is someone knows the encryption or decryption algorithm can be assumed even somebody knowing encryption and decryption algorithm the key is ensuring that the resistance of the cipher is being provided so that attacker cannot fulfill the need of getting the message the secrecy key secrecy of the key is going to maintain that means resistance the resistance of the cipher to attack must be based only on on secrecy of the key so we have to give lot of import importance for this particular key security in messaging at a very high level the message and its contents are secure if a crypt analyst a person with expertise in cipher is unable to obtain the corresponding plain text from a given cipher text and deduce the secret key or the private key 
means the plain text from a given cipher text shall not be available to the crypt analyst and also the crypt analyst shall be unable to deduce the secret key or the private key. When we ensure both these things, then we can say that we have provided security in messaging. Now we shall see what are the different types of crypt analysis attacks. Means crypt analyst is the person who is the trying to identify the pattern between encryption, decryption, and what is how the plain text is getting converted into ciphertext to plain text again. He tries to understand the secrecy and he analyzes the entire pattern and try to attack the message. There are basically four types of crypt analysis attacks that are taking place in symmetric cryptography. One is cipher text only. Second one is by making known plain text. Third one is chosen plain text. Fourth one is chosen cipher text. In cipher text only attack, the alka, the sender, is sending the cipher text to Brijesh, who is the receiver. But in between, the crypt analyst or attacker is trying to capture this cipher text and analyzes it and tries to get the plain text. Here, in order to get the plain text, the crypt analyst or attacker looks for patterns in the cipher text in an attempt to reconstruct some plain text and or deduce the key. The patterns, it is a trial and error method the attacker uses or brute force method where what are the frequently used words, what are the, the two letters which are being used, which are not used, what are the three letters used in combination very frequently. Such patterns he will be looking at it and look at the entire cipher text and trying to make sense of it. Second thing is known plain text attack. Here the crypt analyst looks for all or part of some plain text blocks that are predictable or may be guessed. Means there will be a pattern. For example, when anybody writes English, Oh, okay, this is written by so and so. Like that we assume. Because there is some pattern in anybody's writing. In the same way, whenever message is going from one person to another person, the particular person is using, the sender is using a specific pattern whenever he wants to send the plain text. The crypt analyst or attacker, he is trying to look at part or part of some plain text box that are predictable or may be guessed. By making use of such table or guesses, he builds a repertoire of corresponding plain text and cipher text pairs with the intention of deducing the key. 
The third approach is chosen plain text attack. Intelligent crypt analyst carefully chooses pieces of plain text and induce the sender to encrypt such a text. Means he picks some part of the plain text by sending luring uh, the messages and other things he attacks the sender and using uh, these pieces of plain text the inducer sender without the knowledge sends a message And this particular text, which has been induced by the crypt analysis analyst, is being used during encryption, and message is being sent after encryption. This text, which is moving across the communication channel, will be having that piece of plain text and corresponding encrypted part in the cipher. The crypt analyst looks at it and based on that particular thing, what letter is being used by the sender. Whenever it is being converted, a might have been converted into some other letter. Been converted to some other letter. So the plain text which has been introduced by crypt analyst. For example, if I am putting A B C, if I am using K as equal to three, so the A is getting replaced by the third letter of it after it. For example, A is getting replaced by D. That is B, C, D, three letters after. So the third, fourth letter is being used to replace A. Like that, B is getting replaced by E, C is replaced by F. So the plain text which has been passed by the cryptalist is getting converted into, let us assume that ABC word is getting converted into DF. Now, in the ciphertext it is appearing, crypt analyst looks at it, oh, this particular person is using the k equal to 3, means any letter is being replaced by the third letter after it, like that he assumes and rebuilds entire text. In the chosen ciphertext, the intelligent crypt analyst carefully chooses the pieces of ciphertext small piece he picks up at the receiver end. He then uses the crypt analyst to build the corresponding ciphertext to understand the plain text. This is happening at the receiver side. Like this, the four types of attacks will be carried out by crypt analyst after analyzing the cipher text. Now we shall look at certain traditional ciphers. Traditional ciphers are broadly classified in substitution ciphers and transposition ciphers. In substitution ciphers, we have got monoalphabetic and polyalphabetic. A substitution cipher replaces one symbol with another. Substitution ciphers can be categorized as monoalphabetic ciphers and polyalphabetic ciphers. Now we shall see monoalphabetic substitution. Monoalphabetic substitution, 
the relationship between to a symbol in the sense is one to one the plain text there will be corresponding straight mapping of a letter in ciphertext and which the alphabet shall be used that will be decided by k each alphabet in text is replaced by alphabet k positions away in the lower 26 means the message that we are sending will be in english because of that there are 26 letters and which alphabet after k position is being used to decide on that we are making use of modulo 26 operator let us see the example a better solution is to create a mapping between for k equal to 3 the substitution that alka and jesh can agree are shown in the table for each character so plain text a b c d up to z now since k equal to 3 what is a letter three portions after a if you look at it it comes d means whenever a is appearing in the plain text it is getting replaced by d in the cipher text when b is coming we replace it by e means since k equal to 3 c d e the e is the third letter after b similarly f is the third letter after c means when k equal to 3 it is happening like that if k equal to 4 then what happens fourth letter after a will be considered means whenever a is appearing if k equal to 4 then e shall be used in place of a in ciphertext like that so we have to care we have to be very careful for the value of k here so since k equal to 3 the alphabet in plain text are replaced by the alphabet which is three positions away from it using it we convert in using table of k equal to 3 convert the following plain text to ciphertext my name is vishal this is the plain text m what is the corresponding value so for m we can see here the p is coming there so we replace m by p y by b like that we do it so please remember the third position we are considering using modulo 26 now ciphertext like this by taking letter by letter when we convert it then we will get my name is vishar is getting converted into pb qpdh lv yv kdo like that it is getting converted after that it moves back how we are going to attack this means attacker what is the possible thing he can make it attacking approach is by brute force approach or by guessing by making use of certain rules there are no standard technique here trial and error method only attacker has to do it to do that thing he is trying to use certain pattern so what type of thing he may be using frequency distribution of alphabets in regular text in english a is being used what font is being used with what frequency when you look at it the 12.7 with the frequency highest frequency means if you take any message the 
probability of having E is higher, 12.7. Similarly, T is being used later. A is being used after that, like that. And also, there are frequency of uh, diagrams and trigrams. Means uh, TH, uh, HE, IN, uh, ER, uh, AN, uh, RE, ED, uh, ON, uh, all such things. Or the trigrams like uh, TH, ING, all such things are frequently being used. With this particular knowledge, and also some additional rules such as the letter R and N never occur consecutively or the letter Q is usually followed by another letter U. Like that we understand. Using such things we try to convert it. Now Encrypt NLX has intercepted the following ciphertext using a statistical attack. He find the plain text here. So, this is the ciphertext. After looking at this pattern, by making use of, he finds that the I is be frequently appearing 14, V is 13 times, S is 12 times, and so on. The most common character is I with the 14 occurrences. So, it is appearing 14 times. This means the key is 4, means I 14 value. If I is 14, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. If you look at it, so the value which we are getting that is i position if it is indicating 14 a position if you count back it is 10 10 positions away a is 10 position away then 14 minus 10 means i is the 14th value if you assume then you count back 13 is h 12 is G, like that, count back, then total will get 10. 14 minus 10 equal to 4, means A is going to get the value of 4, key is 4, means when you map A to Z, in the text, cipher text, the fourth position away is being used and replaced. For example, example A is being replaced by E, B is replacing by F, like that alphabet table has been created, then letter by letter we have to pick it up and map, then we will get the message. The house is now for sale for 4 million dollars, it is worth more. Hurry before the seller receives more offers. So like that, it is getting converted. So means encryption and decryption heavily depend on the key and its value. So en the encryptor that is uh, sender and receiver agree upon the key and unlock it. And the attacker or crypt analyst is trying to identify what is that key like and like that he will be working and tries to make the guesses using certain patterns to identify the key this is called caesar cipher with this we shall stop today's class and in next session we will be covering the polyalphabetic